Hello and welcome to Frutch on Fighting. I'm Carl Frutch. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe. Don't forget to share this video and like it. All that jazz, it all helps. Right, you may have already seen, yesterday I went down to London and a good old chin wag with TalkSport. I'm going to be doing a bit more with them moving forward. I'm actually at the um, AJ White fight, 12th of August, I believe that is. My points made and raised about Anthony Joshua, who, by the way, gave this lovely piece of artwork that's I'm carrying around on my face, my nose. He gave it a bit of stick the other day. I'm, it didn't upset me. <laughs> I can't say it without laughing. It didn't upset me. And people think I'm upset. I don't. I, you can call me and slag me off all you want. I've got real thick skin. I've got rhino skin. You can't hurt me. I'm like Teflon. I worked on building sites most of my life, even whilst I was boxing. And I run building sites now. I'm in the property game. A lot of you know that I'm quite heavily invested in property. I'm doing new builds now and redevelopments and, and just flipping over stuff. But anyway, I spend a lot of time on building sites. And as soon as you walk on site, people take the piss out of you. Whether it's your hair, your face, your nose, what clothes you're wearing, and you just, it just bounces off you. Because if you bite and if you get upset, then you get writ off even more. So anyway, you can't hurt me or upset me. And like I said yesterday on TalkSport, I sincerely hope he's talking about my old nose that I used to use as a battering ram because this piece of artwork that I'm carrying around on my face, look at it, it's beautiful. Look how straight that is. I'm very pleased with this hooter. But you don't need to lower yourself to insulting the Cobra's looks. Cobra's quite happy with his looks. And Anthony Joshua, you should be more concerned about getting yourself in great shape, getting the sparring, getting the running done, and getting yourself in, in perfect condition to beat these guys that are in front of you. Because you're getting upset and you're having a go back at me and you've said things about Rob McCracken as well, which I won't go into. Rob McCracken has done so much for you. You achieved so much with Rob McCracken in your corner. You didn't win everything, no. But you lost then came back with a win. And then you went on and did your own thing, tried your own thing in the rematch with Usyk, and that didn't work. And then you've got rid of that trainer, and now you're under a new trainer. Um, so you can't play the blame game anymore. What you need to do is get yourself in good shape, do the sparring, do everything you need to do. And trust me, people will be behind you. Your attitude after losing to Usyk in that second fight, throwing the belts, going on your little rant, telling everyone how you bust case and all that nonsense, it was, it was unnecessary, uncalled for, and it made you look stupid. Let's just be honest. But let's put that aside and just talk about me. I haven't got any beef with Anthony Joshua. I just haven't. I want the heavyweight champion of the world, the former heavyweight champion of the world, to do well and to get back to where he was. We want them heavyweight titles. We want a unified, undisputed title fight, ideally between people in Britain. Nothing against Alexander Usyk. Nothing against... Um, Deontay Wilder, who are the other two top heavyweights. But we want Tyson Fury or Anthony Joshua to hold all of them belts, all the main belts. We want them to stay in England just because it's good for our sport for these belts to remain in Britain. We don't want them going over to America or, or going over to another country in Europe. We want them to stay on British soil. So it's an advantage for me and everybody else involved in boxing. If Tyson Fury or Anthony Joshua or Dylan White can become a unified champion. So there's no personal beef with AJ. Even though he's giving my nose a bit of stick, I'm not interested. I just want to say to him and to the people, yesterday, my, my comments on AJ regarding McCracken and regarding AJ's career, there was 90% positive feedback from it. And people understand my humor. They understand my style of journalism, if that's, if that's what I'm doing. Um, it seems weird calling myself a journalist, but I'm, here I am stood in front of the camera talking about boxing. And um, I quite enjoy it. And the people listening to me, I obviously enjoy it because they give me some positive feedback. 95% positive feedback, actually, not 90. 95% positive feedback, how's that for you? But the 5% negative people that think I've got a problem with AJ, you're wrong. You are totally wrong. I trained with AJ for five years at the IS in Sheffield, the English Institute of Sport in Sheffield. Robert Kraken was training him alongside the, uh, the other Olympians at GB Boxing. And I was there training myself. And me and AJ, we used to go and have breakfast together at the, um, what was it called? The Premier Inn or the Premier Lodge across the road. And I was always amazed how I used to have a, a, 12, a 12 egg white omelette. I was like sitting there thinking, how's he eating 12 eggs? I think he left a couple of yolks in a few of them. And we got on well. We exchanged a lot of, a lot of banter. And I also gave him a lot of advice. I don't forget, I was a professional fighter fighting on Sky Sports underneath Eddie Hearn at the time. And I actually told Anthony Joshua, listen, he's going to turn pro because he was going to go over to America. 
They've got they've got other promoters in Britain tapping him up to 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 promote him. And I said to him, look, AJ, stick with Eddie Hearn. Look what he's done for me in my career. Look how I finished my career. Look, look where I am now in my career. I've, I've, I've had that Kessler rematch on Sky Pay Per View. Sky Pay Per View is where you need to be, and that's how I was at the time. Um, and if you can get his if you can get his fights on Sky and get on box office, which he did, then he's going to make the most money. And that's what I advised him. Sign with Eddie Hearn. That's what I told him. He knows I said that. He knows I did. Eddie Hearn knows that as well. But anyway, that aside, I've got no personal beef with AJ, even though he's no longer working with Rob McCracken. I do think you need to pipe down where you're giving Rob stick, saying that you've, you've lost time. We've got to make up for lost time that you've had with Rob. You can't say you've got to make up for lost time that you've lost with Rob McCracken. Rob McCracken guided you to an Olympic gold medal. I said yesterday two times world champion because you lost any one, but actually, then you have three of the belts. You was a unified heavyweight champion, absolutely smashing it. And fair play to you. you. You defended against every single mandatory challenger that you had. You didn't duck or swerve anybody. And some other heavyweights are swerving people and getting around them. You faced everybody. You took on all comers. That, that fight with Carlos Tackham was tough. You got nutted in the nose in round two or three. You fought Joseph Parker. You fought Povetkin. You, you fought everyone that was in front of you and fair play to you. And then when Alexander Usyk came along, you know yourself, Rob McCracken didn't really fancy that fight. He said it would be a tough, awkward, horrible fight for you. But you wanted to defend that. I think it was the WBO title. So you dug your heels in and you fought Alexander Usyk. And I, I don't think physically you was completely ready for that fight. Um, but without going into that too much, you took the fight and you deserve a round of applause for that. You deserve massive accolades for that. You took the fight. It was tough and you lost. And you had Rob McCracken in your corner. But don't blame Rob McCracken because you lost the rematch with your new trainer and now you're talking about Rob never taught you defence and you've got to make up for time kind of that you've wasted with Rob. And, and to me, that's, that leaves a bad taste in my mouth. I think to myself, it's disrespectful, it's out of order. I said all this yesterday on TalkSport, but I've said what I've said. We're okay with each other. We've got no personal animosity. And like I was about to say then, you know when I see you, like you saw me at ringside when you fought Franklin, you know we've got no personal beef. You know we're going to shake hands and have a good chat. So don't take any of my opinion on you personal. I want you to do well. I want you to su succeed. If you win and you keep them heavyweight titles or get them back into Britain, then that's good for me. It's good for everybody involved in boxing and it's great for British boxing. So we want you to succeed. I want you to succeed, honestly. And I'm not kissing your arse because I'll never kiss anybody's arse. But don't think that I've got a vendetta with you because I simply haven't. Whether it's you or Tyson Fury that are making fights not happen or having a bitch and a moan or saying something that I think is wrong, I will call you out because that's what I do. And I'll talk to you face to face and have it out with you. And I'm not saying this because I'm big and hard and I'll have a fight with you. I do think I'd take them legs and take you down on the cobbles. And if you're on the floor, you're going to struggle with a cobra. <laughs> but anyway, jokes aside, no personal beef and I want you to do well. Genuinely want you to do well. If you can get in there with with doing Dillian White and do the business and, and show us how much business you mean because you're biting back, you've had a go at Robert Crack and you've had a little bit of a go at me, but if you can go in that ring and let your fist do the talking, you can shut everybody up. You won't shut me up, you'll make me applaud you, you'll make me say congratulations, well done. I'm proud of you, I'm happy for you, genuinely. I know what it takes to be a professional fighter, I know how hard it is when you get beat, I haven't beaten myself. I lost to Kessler, I lost to Andre Ward. It's horrible when you lose in the professional ring. It destroys the party and you, you, you've got to get your head around it. And you've got to be mentally tough and rebuild. But it's not how you lose. It's like Rocky Balboa said. It's how you get back. It's how you get off the floor. It's not about not getting knocked down. It's about how you come back from a knockdown. How you come back from a defeat. And how, how you grow inside. You grow personally. Your heart has to become, become stronger and your mind has to become stronger. Not just your body. Your heart and your mind. You have to... You have to believe in yourself and you have to dig deep and just ignore the noise. I'm a bit of noise for you. You don't have to listen to me and watch me or bite back or, or have a go back at me. You should just concentrate on what you're doing. Believe in yourself. Get yourself fit and strong and let your fist do the talking. Something else that people have been asking me to address is um, Derek Chisora. Derek Chisora called me an arsehole and he also said that I'm jealous. <coughs> right. I'm not an arsehole. I'm a nice guy. And I'm not jealous. I'm jealous of nobody. Anybody who's, anybody who's successful and who's self-made and who's worked hard and who is stoic and who goes out there and takes what they can when they can and betters their life and becomes 
a better, stronger, richer human being, I've got nothing but admiration for them. And boxers, professional boxers, to get in that ring, whether they win or lose, they come under that category of supreme human beings that I've got the utmost respect for. But I can be very critical. Sometimes people think I'm being, I'm personal, but it's not. I'm, I'm, sometimes people think I'm overcritical. I'm not, I'm just honest. And sometimes my honesty hurts people because people can't take the honesty. They're like, why is he saying that? Why is he saying that? He must be jealous. That was nonsense. I've got nothing to be jealous about. I'm so successful. I'm so healthy. And that health is your wealth. Health is more important than anything. I've got three amazing children, an amazing wife, and I don't like talking about money, but I'm financially free, which is a massive, not enough boxers come out of this sport and they can say they've got generational wealth. They've set up the future for their kids and they'll never have to work again. I'm one of them lucky people. I, I'm, I'm blessed because I'm in a position, I'm in that position. So there's no jealousy or animosity. Trust me, believe me, it's not in my nature. I'm, I'm becoming, as I get older, not even, I don't think it's an age thing. I just think it's, um, it's a mature and a wise thing. It's wisdom. I'm becoming more and more spiritual. I'm surrounding myself with people that are of the same mindset and thought as me. And I listen to quite a few podcasts and YouTube channels. I'm not going to go into who it is and point them out. I think people know that I listen a little bit to Russell Brand and there's, there's other channels that I listen to and go down, but I don't want to go down different avenues and go down any rabbit holes, but I've got no animosity. I'm not jealous about anybody. So pipe down. If you think the Cobra's jealous, I'm jealous of no man or woman for that matter. Yeah. Derek Chisora, he called me an arsehole. Fuck you. You know, I'm not an arsehole, but I'll tell you what, when you see me, all you do is smile and say hello and shake my hand. Cause I know you haven't got any real beef, but I've got to say that to you for calling me that and saying that I'm jealous because you're out of order. Cause you've gone on a public domain doing it. Now I know you're half messing around and you're tongue in cheek. You're a little bit like me, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to tell people now that a direct messenger calling you out on it. And all you did was send me an emoji of a crime will laughter face. So that kind of sums up the fact that you're joking, which is fair enough, but I've had to address it, address it on my channel and tell people that, um, just call you out for what you are. Listen, me and Derek Chisora, we haven't got any beef. I like Derek Chisora. I admire him. I always thought he had a bit of beef for me because David Hay, El Sparko did him. Bosh, ironed him out. That was a great fight, by the way. And I thought, because my mate ironed him out, that's why he's got beef for me. But he hasn't, because after he got ironed out by David Hay, he employed him to give him advice and paid him still even more. So I know Derek Chisora is a nice guy, probably too nice. But um, yeah, hopefully that sorts out the Derek Chisora beef. And Derek, when I see you, I will buy you a pint. So that's it for another episode of Frotch on Fighting. Thanks for listening. Whilst you're here, don't forget to hit subscribe and I will see you next week.